Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to things that are legal in the US, but not, I guess, in the rest of the world. I've just reacted to things that are illegal in the US and aren't in the rest of the world. So this is the complete opposite. I enjoyed it. I thought this guy's video was pretty good. And I just saw this on the suggested videos and I thought I'd react to it pretty much. But let's jump into this. Hopefully going to enjoy links. America is the top. freest most... To my Patreon, if you want to see some more reactions of mine or you want to suggest me some videos to see in the future, on most likely my Patreon because if you want to suggest me some videos and I can't post them to YouTube, that's where they go. But yeah, links are all there. Let's jump into this and see these things that are on this video. Freedom full country in the entire world, despite what some hack YouTube lawyer says. And for those traveling internationally for the first time, you may be surprised to learn that many American rights, freedoms, and values are not universally held abroad. In fact, one country's liberty can be another country's crime. But in fact, we Americans are so constantly surrounded by so much freedom that we often just take it for granted. Like David Foster Wallace's metaphor, one fish asks another, how's the water today? And the other fish shoots him with an AR-15. And if you've spent your entire life in the land of the free and home of the brave, it can be easy to overlook the other countries that are in fact not America. There are tons of rights and activities that are perfectly legal in the United States, but could land you in some hot water if you tried it in another country. Like the mullet hairstyle, for example. Oh my God, where the hell is the mullet illegal? Especially now when it's literally come back into fashion. Bro, I wish I could rock a mullet. My hair is shit, but I cannot rock a mullet. If I could, I would, mate, because it looks sick. And everyone, it's like being brought back. How can a hairstyle be banned? I mean, I remember in school, they used to like not allow certain people to have certain haircuts. And it's ridiculous. I swear there was some racism behind it or something. It wasn't always to do with that. Like, maybe a girl dyed her hair pink. You can't come into school today, your hair is pink. But a lot of the time, maybe like someone has an afro and they want their hair like not so big or something. And they would, the teachers would literally be like, you can't have your hair like this. It's ridiculous. And it just reminds me of that, like... How can a hairstyle be banned? Let someone have whatever hair they want. What's going on? The mullet, that iconic hairstyle of 1980s actors, rock stars, and athletes, uh, really has no business continuing to exist in the 21st century. And it does. People love it. It's like the new thing. Yet, again, inexplicably, it still does. But this okay. is America, damn it, where you don't have to fight for your right to party in the back and business in the front. But if you want to cosplay as Joe Dirt or compete in the USA Mullet Championships, yes, that is a very is real thing? thing that people do, then oh, it is mate. your right as an American to look like an idiot. In fact, that might be the most fundamental American right that there is. But for certain freedom-hating countries trying to save you from yourselves, the mullet and other crimes of fashion constitute a criminal offense. For example, in 2010, Iran's Ministry of Culture officially said goodbye to mullets, banning the hairstyle for being un-Islamic. In an effort to rid the country of so-called decadent Western haircuts, it's Iran... too Americanized. These Iranians are getting too Americanized. You can't have a mullet. To be fair, I don't think I'd ever see someone of Iranian descent rocking a mullet. So it's it's now illegal, but to be fair, I don't think there's been an Iranian on this planet that's rocked a mullet, so... Probably not affecting too many people. Still, that's why. Launched a crackdown on mullets, elaborate spikes, and long hair, because nothing says decadence like the mullet. Now, in years leading up to the ban, police have actually raided barbershops that offer these disfavored hairstyles. After the ban, what? violators have been subject to fines and impromptu haircuts by the police for violating these standards. Government officials have even gone to hairdressing trade shows to outline what haircuts are legal. Also, in 2021, North Korea launched its own war against mullets and other foreign styles. In an effort to crack down on so-called non-socialist hairdos, the rogue communist country outlawed mullets and spiky dyed hair while also enlisting the state-run socialist patriotic youth league to act as literal fashion police against the banned cuts. What Nose the and lip fuck? piercings, skinny jeans, and branded t-shirts were also outlawed. And though this is hardly the worst human rights violation of this repressive regime, seems like Kim Jong-un is in no no place to prosecute anyone for <laughs> bro this man's hair is awful that's coming from me bro kim you cannot decide what people are having when you've got that ridiculous haircuts and it's not just hairstyles that don't make the cut pun 100 percent intended in the nation of tajikistan the secular government has waged a war on beards in an effort to crack down on what it sees as the influence of islamic radicalism in the country only clean shaven men can get passports and beards are often forcibly shaved off by whoa only clean shaven men can get passports i would be screwed Bro, I mean, I've barely got any facial hair. It's slowly coming, but without any of this, I look like a rat, mate. 
I look horrible. So if I was forced to have no facial hair, I would be done for, man. Police officers. So if you're a hersweet hipster looking to open up that barbershop just for that ironic beard and mustache, you'll have to look outside of Tajikistan, but obviously you already said the shop in Williamsburg anyway. But just because it's legal to get a really terrible haircut in the United States doesn't mean that you won't what? be subject to a good spanking. Uh, unless you're outside of the United States. Because when it comes to raising children, there's a fierce debate as to whether parents should spank their kids. Some parents oh. live by the adage, use your words, not your hands. While other parents, particularly those influenced by older generations, live by the biblically inspired aphorism, spare the rod, spoil the child. But as a strictly legal matter, here in the grand old US of A, the right to spank your kids shall not be infringed. In fact, the use of corporal punishment on one's own children, defined as spanking, paddling, or other forms of physical punishment to correct misbehavior, is protected by law in all 50 states plus the District of Columbia. Now, for those of us whose parents spanked us as kids, that probably doesn't surprise you. What might surprise you in most of the United States is that it remains perfectly legal for teachers to paddle children in school and not just Whoa, wait. It's legal at public schools in 19 states, mainly in the South, and is allowed at private schools in 48 states. Students are typically spanked with paddles that measure up to two feet long. What? This was banned. I thought this was banned like, in like the US, the UK ages ago. <laughs> wait, what? Does this happen though? Or is this just a thing that's legal, but it's not actually a thing that happens? Wait, what? In Springfield Elementary School. Talking out of turn, that's a paddling. Looking out the window, that's a paddling. In fact, in 1977, the Supreme Court upheld the constitutionality of school spankings. In Ingram what? versus Wright, the court ruled 5-4 that paddling children in public schools did not violate the Eighth Amendment's ban on cruel and unusual punishment. As a result, the Supreme Court left it up to Bro, but you're going to have some sadistic people who are going to enjoy doing that. They're going to enjoy slapping a, a younger person, like, just because it's just some people are messed up like that. What the heck? I was not expecting this in this video. What the, the hell? The states to decide whether to allow spanking in educational settings or to ban it. Huh? Oh, yeah! And today, 19 U.S. states still allow public school personnel to use corporal punishment from preschool states where public school teachers can touch your child's butt at will bro what to the 12th grade and looks like ukraine yo shout out ukraine man no one cares but what the f that is the wildest thing i've ever seen preschool to the 12th grade no, it's not but and for private schools corporal punishment remains legal in every u.s state except new jersey and iowa but outside the united states there has been a clear oh, trend uh, not merely to dissuade parents from spanking children but to actually make the practice illegal in 1979, Sweden became the first country to explicitly ban spanking. This was wildly controversial at the time, sparking contentious debate about parental rights versus... I don't know why it would be controversial. I'm, I'm sort of in the middle of this. When you're a young kid and your parents, there's a situation, there's sort of circumstances where a child will need to be sort of, to know what's, what... I don't know how to explain it because I don't want to sound like I'm for or against it, but I know when I was a child, I was a little shit. So there was definitely points where I def I got it a few times, but not like that. I was, I don't think I was really like spanked like that. And I remember one time I was went by my mum in the middle of the street because <laughs> I was a, I was an awful child. But there's a, there's always a time and place where a child will need it because I I said need I don't want to say needs it because I'm not for or against it. I can understand both sides when it's to a degree, but like your teachers shouldn't be able to do it. That's ridiculous to me. But also it's being seen as like controversial at this point in time is also kind of baffling to me. I can see both sides, but there's some ch children that, could, mate, like there's children that probably need it unless, I don't want to say need it, but I, I don't know how to say it, but just it will probably help them in future when they're older and they'll realize, okay, they can't do certain things, you know? I feel like all animals do it. They'll sort of punish their children in some sort of way. Um, shit, I got cool. state responsibilities and some Swedish headlines. Hello? Oh, for God, she just hung up. She's just hung up on me. God damn it. I'll be 15 minutes. I'll be 15 minutes. Oh, she's gone. She's gone. <laughs> what 
What's going on? I'm sorry. Lines about at the time included, quote, Swedes have gone mad and the government takes charge of parenting in Sweden. But over the past four decades, the trend against spanking has been on the rise all over the world. In fact, according to the American Spanking Institute, in conjunction with Mothers for Hand... This is a thing. And smacking. I'm just kidding. I made both of those just Okay. Up. You got to stay on your toes. No, I mean, according to the Global Initiative to End All Corporal Punishment of Children, a total of 63 countries have made smacking children illegal in any setting, including at home. So it's prohibited in some settings in most these countries. Prohibited in all settings. I can understand both sides. I'm not going to lie. It's one of those situations where I can sort of see both of them. Government committed to full prohibition. Home. And countries on this list span five continents, and in 2022, Wales became the latest country to ban the practice. And the bans oh. are even more numerous in school settings, with corporal punishment in schools now outlawed in 135 countries. Ooh, you better believe that's a bad one. Decades after Sweden's ban, anti-spanking advocates can point to hard data that suggests that a direct correlation between spanking bans and better adjusted children. But that being said, the prospect of actually prohibiting spanking at home remains unlikely in the United States, as many consider such a ban to be an oppressive intrusion by the state into parental rights. And even in the 21st century, spanking in the U.S. has its share of high-profile defenders, particularly on the conservative side of the aisle. I got hit with a strap, bam, 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 I, I, and I've never been to a shrink. In 2014, Fox News commentator Sean Hannity famously defended parents' rights to spank their children, citing his own upbringing by beating the desk with a belt to a confused panel. I got it like this. Yeah. Uh, uh. And yeah. I deserved it. I but was a we, troubled kid. You know now, notwithstanding the views of the obviously well-adjusted commentator who clearly turned out fine, spanking has seen a notable decline in the U.S. The proportion of parents who utilize the practice has dropped from 50% in 1993 to only 35% in 2017. But look, if you want your children to turn out like Sean Hannity, then maybe start with some spankings. But that takes us to a topic that almost everyone okay. agrees on, and that is we go. cannabis. Because in a nation that seems increasingly divided on almost every single issue, one of the few areas of bipartisan agreement is the embrace of legal marijuana. Now, although cannabis remains illegal under federal law, the feds have allowed states to experiment with their own loosened restrictions because, well, well, I'll let John Mulaney explain that one. With weed, it was just something we wanted really badly. And we kept asking them for 40 years, like, excuse me. <laughs> And then suddenly the government became like cool parents and they're just like, okay, here, take a little. We'd rather you do it in the house than go somewhere else, blah, 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 blah. But that being said, Customs and Border Patrol works tirelessly to prevent drugs from entering this country. Like the time that they celebrated the interdiction of this massive haul of drugs from entering American shores. Thank you for your service. But as of 2022, recreational marijuana is currently legal in 18 states, DC and Guam. 31 states plus DC have decriminalized low level offenses and a whopping 37 states allow it for medical use. With public support for full legalization standing at a record 68%, Americans certainly have- This is one thing that I think anyone can agree that the US is so much further than anywhere else on this planet. I don't know where else this is legal, but the majority of places it isn't. I don't smoke weed. I don't, it, it does not go well with me, but the US is definitely ahead of its time of, of all other countries I can think of, especially like Europe in terms of like being legalized other than like obviously the Netherlands. But yeah, it's one of those ones that it being banned just doesn't really make sense. But again, there's probably going to be people that see that me say this and they can be like, how can you say that? Have come a long you know? way since the days of I don't smoke madness. It. Innocently, lie. they dance. Innocent of a new and deadly menace lurking behind closed doors. Bruh. The burning weed with its roots in hell. But try to take that wacky <laughs> tobacco you know. outside of our borders and you could find yourself in severe legal jeopardy. In fact, in a handful of countries, possession of cannabis could have you staring down a hangman's noose. And this disparate legal treatment of cannabis abroad was recently put on display following a high profile detention in Putin's Russia. In February, 2022, US women's basketball superstar, Brittany Griner was arrested after customs authorities claimed to have found a cannabis vape oil cartridges in her carry on bag. But given that Griner's arrest came days before Russia invaded Ukraine, some have speculated that the Kremlin arrested Ms. Greiner to pressure the U.S. and others to not stand in the way of Putin's invasion. To that point, Russia has been known to falsify drug charges against critics in the past, so it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility that the same happened here. I guess she should just consider herself lucky that she wasn't poisoned with a radioactive substance. 
But while a few dozen countries have relaxed restrictions on the plant, the recreational and medical use of cannabis remains very illegal in the vast majority of nations. For example, in 2021, 24-year-old British soccer coach Billy Hood was arrested in the United Arab Emirates with four bottles of CBD vape oil in his car. Local authorities charged Mr. Hood with drug trafficking and then sentenced him to 25 years in a Dubai prison. Mr. Hood's sentence was then reduced to 10 years on appeal, but he remains incarcerated. What? That is insane, man. CBD as well, that's like, that's, I mean, it's kind of different. I mean, it is the same, but it's different. Bro, these countries don't, don't take anything, man. That's wild. In 2013, Egypt executed Charles Raymond Ferndale, a 74-year-old British citizen, for allegedly smuggling three tons of hashish, which Ferndale... They executed him. What? Insisted until his death that he had been tricked into doing by third parties. In 2021, Singapore sentenced Omar Yaqub Bamadhaj to death for bringing at least two pounds of cannabis into the country in 2018. And like Ferndale, his lawyers also argued he did not knowingly bring drugs into the country. Though despite Jeez. America's comparatively looser pot restrictions, America still has over 40,000 people in jail for marijuana offenses, something that absolutely requires fixing. And even with these yeah. disparities, at the very least though, toking up the United States will not result in the death sentence. But that's something that you can change in America because you have the I right to vote, not. but you also have the right to not vote if you don't want to, because while millions of Americans stand up every election- Wait, what country is it that you're forced to vote unless you get, and if you don't, you get a fine? Is it Australia? Today to have their voices heard, uh, millions of Americans also choose to sit down, stay home, and deliberately not vote at all. If I were registered to vote, I'd send these clowns a message by staying home on election day and dressing up like a clown. Now, it might seem obvious to say that you have the right not to participate in American elections, but it might surprise you to learn that staying home on election day is actually illegal in over two dozen countries. That's right, in 27 countries, all eligible citizens are required by law to register and vote in every single election. Though several countries like Chile, uh, Italy, and the Dominican Republic that previously adopted mandatory voting have since abandoned the practice. A handful of countries with compulsory voting don't actually enforce any penalty for failure to vote, like Bulgaria, Costa Rica, and Mexico, but over a dozen countries enforce a penalty for failing to vote in elections. Wow. Some countries penalize non-voters with outright disenfranchisement. In Singapore, a voter that misses an election is removed from voting rolls and must re-register and submit a valid reason for not voting. Other countries issue fines and can even result in jail time. Brazil requires all eligible citizens, excluding the illiterate, voters aged 16 and 17, and those aged 70, to vote or be subject to a fine of less than $1. In Australia, <laughs> citizens are legally required what? to go to their polling place, but can choose to decline to participate after signing in. However, failure to show up at the polling place at all can subject Aussies to a fine of 100 didgeridoos, probably, or the equivalent of 14 to 34 US dollars, and citizens who repeatedly refuse to pay the small fine can actually go to jail. Among countries uh -huh. with compulsory voting laws, there are those that tie voting directly to your pocketbook. For example, in Peru, a voter must have a stamped voting card to obtain certain services and goods uh, from some public offices. And in Bolivia, a voter is given a card to prove participation, and a citizen who cannot show proof of voting within three months after the election will be ineligible to receive a salary from the bank. Advocates for this compulsory system, what? like in the democratic participation to civil responsibilities like taxation, jury duty, and military service, and argue that participating in democracy is a duty instead of a right. Others argue that forcing people to vote compels higher voter turnout, as Australia rarely falls below 90% participation, while Brazil's most recent presidential election was just below 80%. And uh, compare that to the United States, where voter turnout struggles to crack 50% in a midterm election and only occasionally breaks 60% in presidential contests. However, the idea of forcing people to vote and punishing them for non-participation is not a popular concept among nations with voluntary suffrage. Critics see voting as a civic right rather than a duty and contend that forcing someone to vote is counter to the very idea of liberty and free choice. Yeah. No, and some American legal scholars contend that mandatory voting laws would constitute compelled speech that violates the First Amendment, as the right to speak necessarily involves the freedom not to speak. So as long as you live in the United States, you can rest assured of your constitutional right to say none of the above. The only thing that's silly is the power of the people's vote. And I think the people should use it to vote for them. <laughs> None of the above. Now, if you want to see even more dumb criminals and damn, the more you know. I do like this guy's channel though. In Sweden, any form of violence against a child is, is in legal terms assault, mishandle, mishandle. 
We have no separate laws for hitting a child. If you hit a child, it will be treated the same way as if you smacked an adult. It's very illegal. Damn. I mean, I'm not going to say that's right or wrong. I don't really know what to think about it, to be honest. It's quite a touchy subject. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction. That comment killed me. Um, yeah, if you want more reactions to this channel or whatever, let me know in the comments. And until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.